Hello everyone, this is Olivia. In this video, uh, I will go over clustering and the method k-means for clustering. Uh, this is a shorter video because last time we already talked about similarity measure for uh, based on distance functions, which is also an important um, uh, foundation for clustering. So I will get to um, the definition of cluster and uh, uh, and get started quickly. So cluster uh, and intuitively is uh, it means what it sounds uh, seems like a collection of objects that are similar to each other or one another within a cluster. And usually when we do clustering, we generate multiple clusters. So, and that's the reason why for doing grouping. And um, so another important property of cluster is also objects belong to different clusters are dissimilar uh, to each other. So uh, objects in one cluster are more similar to each other than to uh, objects in other clusters. And so clustering is essentially a process to group objects into um, groups of clusters. Um, what those clusters mean, or uh, what we mean that by the labels of uh, clusters, are not pre-specified. So this is uh, something you can already sense that uh, uh, that is different from classification. Uh, where uh, the buckets or classes are pre-specified. And uh, although before clustering, some of the methods such as k-means will predetermine how many clusters we will group objects into. And uh, as um, we mentioned that the uh, clusters are not pre-labeled, so this is uh, the first of unsupervised learning task that we are learning in the class, uh, in the second half of the class. So most of our tasks are supervised learning tasks that we apply in real world. But uh, a couple of unsupervised learning tasks that we will talk about today are fairly useful in both answering some uh, business questions, but moreover also to help us explore data. So the process look like this, uh, number of objects, and they contain their attribute values, which are important for calculating similarity. And we just know we will generate a number of clusters and uh, with some not necessarily meaningful uh, mean, uh, labels initially, uh, later on creating labels for clusters could be a useful uh, business exercise when you think about how to use clusters to segment um, uh, customers or different objects. So um, we talk about some different questions that could be useful, uh, occur, uh, to which that clustering can be useful. Uh, one other thing I will talk about clustering is, we also often use uh, the word clustering, at least uh, some other data scientists or myself, we use clustering to represent or to refer to the collection of clusters that, uh, that uh, a clustering method generate from a data set. So it's kind of like a model. Clustering is kind of like a clustering model. So um, uh, some of the real-world questions are related to how to segment uh, objects, for example, very useful for marketing, um, for behavioral targeting based on customer segments. But some other uh, questions that motivate the use of uh, clustering can be discovery or explanatory. For example, what are the, uh, without knowing exactly what to do, but kind of want to find out who are, what are the characteristics of customers with with good or bad ratings. So if we know some customers belong to good ratings and some belong to bad ratings, then how we can um, better understand their characteristics within those. Or we just throw this attribute together with other attributes of customers and look at what um, class clusters come out of uh, a clustering task. And, um, and uh, the segmentation questions 
are uh, to improve marketing strategy um, um, based on maybe promotions so discounts uh, uh, apply uh, differently to different segments of customers. So in order to execute this type of strategy or develop this type of strategy, we need to understand what are those uh, customer segments? What are the different customer segments? The same thing if you apply to healthcare uh, sector um, and um, uh, customers are actually patients and uh, to better understand uh, patient center or personal, personalized treatments or um, medicine, then segmenting uh, patients could be a useful task to apply to patient data. Um, and also continuing on different exploratory discovery questions. Um, nowadays, um, clustering or all kinds of data mining tasks uh, have been applied to big data. For example, on internet, social media, uh, blogs, uh, user-generated content in blogs, in forums, in Twitters, microblogging. Uh, user reviews and customer emails and uh, customer survey uh, responses and so on and so forth. You may want to find out what are some of the themes or topics in those uh, in the content uh, generated or text generated by users or customers. And, uh, and you may not know what you will do, but initially just trying to discover and then go from there is uh, can be a very useful exercise in data mining. Uh, similarly, this is this came up a lot um, because of the difficulty of obtaining uh, label data for supervised learning in fraud detection area intrusion. Uh, not only because these are rare events, but also because that they. Um, uh, sometimes it's really hard to judge, and you don't have the resources that in, um, to investigate and, and, and then determine the labels of uh, fraudulent transactions or uh, network uh, intrusions or um, attacks. So a lot of time, a dis um, discovery or exploratory task by looking at what are the uh, clusters of uh, logging patterns or network access or uh, banking transactions and just to see whether you can learn from the patterns to better formulate the uh, business questions. And so the process of clustering, uh, uh, a clustering task is a um, uh, uh, simple few steps and um, but one of them is the main uh, loop. Initially, there's some initialization, such as if there are K clusters, then you want to um, uh, form the initial K uh, clusters, or there are some different clustering methods, then it will determine uh, what it would, uh, will be required at the beginning, besides importing data and so on. Uh, similarity is one um, uh, needs to be measured. Uh, to determine whether objects in the same clusters are similar to one another, but they're more different to uh, uh, objects belonging to other clusters. So similar to KNN, there will be a step uh, for computing similarity uh, between objects. And if the initialization already have clusters, uh, there are also some similarity uh, calculations between objects to clusters or cluster means. This similarity may also uh, calculation or recalculations will uh, may be included in the next step, which is a main loop to go through clusters uh, to um, iteratively uh, iteratively uh, uh, going through records or instances and to assign them to um, clusters or just group them into um, clusters based on similarity uh, measures. And uh, the last one is to check on a stopping condition, uh, threshold or um, you know, uh, no more work to do or no more changes, uh, no more iterations can be possible then uh, clustering is done, then the cluster content and information about objects in the clusters will be generated. 
So uh, there are a lot, a lot of clustering methods and k-means method that we uh, uh, use um, actually went back to 70s and 80s, but it's still the, uh, one of the some of the recent implementations are based on uh, papers still coming out in 2000, uh, in the early 2000 to uh, 2000, uh, even after 2010. Uh, we will be looking at k-means, uh, which are one of the uh, simpler, uh, a very simple. Um, easy to understand distance-based pa uh, partitioning clustering method. There are a number of other uh, methods called uh, EM expectation maximization, um, which is um, based related to naive Bayesian uh, and uh, to maximize the uh, expectation is uh, a likelihood measure. And uh, father's first is related to uh, distance-based partition method and um, based on how to traverse and even initially how to uh, assign um, records or instances to uh, K classes uh, that can also apply this. Uh, some other methods don't, are not based on similarity, based on a different, uh, you know, different uh, a derivation of distance called density uh, like in a set, how dense, how sparse um, you know, uh, the data is in the, uh, the uh, uh, attribute value space and that's density based. And some are um, built on other types of uh, models uh, we call model based conceptual clustering and hierarchical clustering uh, is based on distance but can be either partitioning or um, uh, bottom up uh, uh, to uh, instead of partitioning, it will be based on grouping. And these are some of the common um, methods, and they can be grouped uh, into different um, types. And there's two ideas to separate clustering method. One is uh, distance uh, uh, density or model-based, and we talked about some of those already. The other is whether we're doing um, top down um, partitioning or bottom-up merging. Top-down meaning taking the whole set and start to uh, divide up the set into subsets and gradually uh, uh, keep on dividing them or changing them will, um, um, based on partitioning, will form the final uh, clusters. Merging will start from, which are actually the, uh, maybe more popular, is uh, start from bottom up from every single uh, records and start to group them and combine them into clusters, uh, into larger clusters. In a way, k means a little bit uh, uh, distance based and uh, uh, can be partitioning, can also be uh, merging, depends on the method, it uh, depends on the implementation. So um, when we apply clustering, we need to be aware of a uh, number of uh, decisions that uh, data scientists could make to, that would change the outcome of clustering, which means changing the clusters um, and, up, uh, and which uh, objects belong to those class clusters. And one is definitely features, your attributes, your input variables, um, and as we mentioned last time in KNM, because these attribute values will be used to calculate similarity, and the similarity functions are not biased. They will include all of the attributes, so including uh, useful but not noisy attributes will be important. Uh, definitely different, all kinds of uh, there are different methods, and each method has some different strengths and weaknesses. We won't have a chance to do that kind of comparison. Uh, in this class, but uh, a lot of clustering methods are available uh, uh, in different packages in R that you are encouraged to explore to uh, compare. And uh, different similarity measure could make a difference, including Manhattan versus Euclidean distance. And the latter one ten, uh, is definitely the default in uh, all, uh, just most of the clustering uh, methods I, uh, we uh, have applied or I have applied uh, in the past. 
um, but comparing them could be useful. Of course, if, um, if it's important to an application, domain-based customized similarity measure is also uh, a way to affect classing outcome. And there are other few um, parameters related to the method. For example, uh, the method we will introduce uh, called k-means um, will require parameter k that which is the number of clusters, and that could change the outcome, uh, obviously. But there are also some other parameters besides distance measure, such as or whether um, snail deviation information uh, uh, for each cluster will be output, or um, how some of the method could be uh, changed or affected by uh, using some uh, parameter values. And uh, for k-means, the initial assignment of records or in initial assignment to uh, become to form the uh, k, to form k cluster centroids are a very important part of that. And some method, some implementation uh, such as simple k-means in Arweka will allow for that change. So in your tutorial and in your assignment, uh, we can practice some of this. So um, we already uh, learned similarity uh, last time using distance functions. So this is just quickly mention uh, the basic properties of distance measure are uh, this. And uh, the mo two most uh, common distance functions and simple intuitive uh, uh, Manhattan, Euclidean, and this is the default in most implementation, the formulations. Uh, the, this were, um, and the examples were uh, explained in uh, last week's uh, K similarity and KAN slice, and also um, in uh, chapters related to uh, similarity or KAN uh, in the um, two reference books. And uh, another thing I want to mention is, um, as we discussed in class and in the video, that uh, because of different value range of um, attributes, and uh, there's concern that some, um, some variables such as spending here, high values can dominate the distance or similarity. So normalization, we introduce called mean max normalization to standardize the minimum value and uh, maximum value of each attribute for in this example will be two from zero to 100. That's uh, one common normalization. Uh, the other common normalization or we call standardization uses this score standardization will transform the original value to a standardized value by using this formula, which is a Z score formula, which essentially measure how many times um, that the value is away from the uh, attribute mean of all instances, and uh, it can be, uh, so the mean will be centered at zero, so um, negative uh, standardized value, z-score value means uh, it's lower than uh, the mean, and by one time, two times, or a fraction of uh, one times of uh, the standard deviation and positive value will be uh, larger than uh, positive z-score value means that this original value is uh, higher than mean and is uh, by one, two, or a fraction of um, the mean absolute uh, uh, deviation. Um, so now we will get to uh, k-means method uh, and uh, introduce the method using examples uh, without going through the official uh, algorithm. And it is pretty intuitive. Both the um, books, Data Science for Business, and Machine Learning with R have uh, covered, have used some uh, visual diagrams and some examples to explain this quite well. I, um, in this video and in the slides, I have use a combination of examples from both sources. And um, in lieu of my uh, previous uh, examples that I have used in the past. So, uh, so before we get to the process and examples to illustrate k-means process, um, first introduce uh, means uh, in the uh, method 
k-means. Means are centroids. Essentially, centroids are centroids. Uh, a centroid is the cent uh, the um, arithmetic, uh, arithmetic or arithmetic means or averages of the attribute values. Uh, attribute values. Um, uh, each attribute is considered to be a dimension in the uh, data space, and um, this averages of each attributes represent uh, uh, the cluster centroid, and the values are from the instances in that um, cluster. So means essentially are attribute means of um, elements in the in a cluster. And k, as we mentioned, is the number of clusters. So the process or the main um, steps in k-means um, are the following. Uh, initially, uh, it will start with uh, k, uh, uh, given k, it will start to form um, uh, k clusters. And uh, k-means now we'll use, so there are different methods to form the initial K clusters. And the initial K clusters are single um, record clusters. Uh, each cluster is not assigned uh, more or less than one uh, record. So the cluster centroid of the, uh, a single record cluster essentially is, are, uh, is uh, represented by the attribute values of that uh, record. Then um, after this initialization, uh, then we can start to uh, go into uh, loops. Uh, the loops are assigning the rest of the records to uh, the different clusters based on the distance between a record and the centroids of different clusters. And a record will be assigned to the closest cluster based on the distance uh, to that uh, cluster centroid, cl that cluster's centroid. And after we assign this, if you can imagine the centroids are calculated as the means of attributes, uh, uh, attribute values um, of uh, records belonging to a cluster. So whenever new records are assigned to a cluster, then the centroid needs to be uh, will change, so needs to be updated, and that will trigger uh, some domino effect when um, the cluster uh, centroids are recalculated. Then um, the distance between uh, objects to cluster centroids also change. So then there is a reevaluation to see hey, whether some clusters are. Now, clo uh, so, sorry, some records are now closer to uh, the updated uh, cluster centroids, and then go through some reassignment, and then the reassignment of records to um, uh, uh, different clusters, uh, or changing the assignments of records to some uh, different clusters will again trigger uh, changes in calculating cluster centroids, and so this part essentially um, will be a loop. And, um, but the loop will come to a stop when there's no more reassignment after you keep on updating centroids and, and, and uh, the last uh, centroid updates did not affect any uh, uh, the similarities between uh, centroids and records uh, in such a way that require those re some of the records to be reassigned to uh, another uh, to other clusters. When that stops, then there's no update to cluster in centroid. And there's no reassignment, so there's uh, no more work to do. So it will stop. At the end, it will output uh, the clusters with uh, number uh, size and the means of centroids and some other information that you could, uh, that some method will help calculate for you. So here is an example to explain uh, what we mean using um, three clusters, uh, simple clusters. So here in this uh, example from chapter six of data science, for business, um, uh, the three stars uh, color differently uh, represent 
uh, at this point in time, the centroids of uh, three clusters. And the dashed line essentially means um, uh, uh, connect the centroid to the uh, records that belong to the uh, clusters. And um, so you can see uh, initially uh, this, this diagram, not initially, at this point, you can see this look like a very good uh, clustering outcome where um, the clusters are far from each other. And within each cluster, the distance um, of uh, elements to the centroid seems also to be close enough. But moreover, uh, like objects like this, they really uh, are really uh, closest to the cluster it belongs to and not uh, 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 far, um, uh, uh, farther uh, to other cluster centroids or other clusters. So that is a good um, clustering outcome or three clusters. And um, uh, using another example from machine learning with R in chapter nine, we can see the uh, cluster update uh, and cluster centroid update uh, a little bit uh, step by step, just um, by going through some examples. This, uh, in chapter six, it also introduced a diagram which uh, divides up the um, records or uh, points uh, which represent records or instances in the data set uh, to, um, um, that belong to different clusters. Um, the two dimensions in this example are related to um, publications, uh, publication types. So the, um, uh, the heavily co color, uh, uh, the, sol uh, no, the darker color, uh, shapes, uh, stars, triangles, uh, and diamonds are the centroids of these three clusters divided by this dashed line. Uh, the shapes also represent the elements that belong to the clusters of this uh, centroid. Okay, so uh, triangles and diamonds. Okay, so now um, as we uh, have a new assignment, which is uh, this uh, point, for example, here, to um, uh, the cluster. And by k means, the assignment will be done based on the distance. And even though this is kind of close, uh, this is uh, uh, between these two, let's assume this is the closest. And it's clear that this is uh, quite far from this. So uh, this new point is assigned to this cluster, and uh, I, col uh, I use the same shape and have a uh, different color just to indicate it's a new record assigned to this cluster. And this is the original uh, cluster centroid before this is assigned. So now that this is assigned, there got to be a little, um, this needs to be recalculated because the attribute values of this will affect uh, this centroid. So since this is a little bit higher up there, so based on these two attribute values, likely this will start to shift a little bit up, upwards. So in this example, um, uh, this has changed uh, kind of like this has uh, shifted. And as this has shifted, the, bound, uh, the boundary may also need to be adjusted. Uh, in this example, without actually having the actual value, we're assuming that originally these two points um, are closer to uh, this um, uh, centroid. Uh, let's assume after we have changed this, these two points are closer to this new centroid. So they no longer should be um, triangles. They now should belong to this uh, cluster and um, because the distance are uh, closer, so now this cluster have another two new uh, 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 points or records assigned here. This will be updated uh, since this cluster have lost these two records. This original centroid also needs to be adjusted. You can see the original centroid 
sort of surrounds this one. But because it loses this two, uh, likely this centroid should be shifted this way because uh, this two edge, um, points no longer contribute to the calculation of this centroid. So as you can see, it has shifted this way. And then, um, so the boundary should be redrawn. Uh, and this two uh, centroid updates or these two clusters changes will also need to uh, impact on the reassessment of whether other points should belong to this two. And so far, it seems like after this being shifted, there's no more need for reassigning or adjusting this uh, three, uh, this line, um, three classes centroid seems to be final elements, uh, class uh, belonging to different clusters can also be uh, finalized. So then, um, then the k-means alg algorithm can stop when we are not reassigning points and re-updating uh, centroids. So I hope this example uh, illustrates the iterative process. And this is an example from um, chapter six, data science for uh, business. Uh, mainly it indicates um, sort of these lines as time goes, the uh, points, the centroid started from uh, of this uh, red clusters or uh, dot plot uh, cluster started out there and started to migrate it down as a reassignment uh, change or after initial then new uh, the next assignment make a big change and then gradually uh, reassignment started to move it down here this is the initial centroid location and then after um, uh, other records are assigned it started to make a shift then reassignments also further uh, change its location. Similar here, this uh, initial central location for this uh, crosses, uh, 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 the clusters for crosses were here and then uh, after uh, records uh, gradually join or reassign, then it has finalized here. So this are the final clustering. A little bit not so ideal because it's not that easy to um, uh, uh, a lot of points are close to each other. So for three cluster, uh, these are uh, these two actually are close to each other. But in terms of centroid, this is closer to this, uh, and not closer to uh, this. And this is closer to this, and not as close to this. So it could look like um, this is a tough clustering. Uh, task, but potentially this may be more like a two clusters visually, and or there could be some different uh, clustering groups that could be formed, uh, like four groups. Then maybe I will group this way, um, and then separating this into a smaller clusters, and so on and so forth. So you can see number of clusters could also just. Uh, impact the result of this set of um, uh, of clustering this set of records. So, um, when in the tutorial and in assignment seven, you, uh, it could uh, uh, the, you have a parameter to select um, whether you implement k-means uh, as it, the original uh, based on the original algorithm or implement. Uh, K means plus plus uh, uh, in that uh, in the package that you select or in the method you select, and K means plus plus was uh, proposed in two thousand and seven, uh, and the K means uh, implementation uh, by um, was based on the algorithm from uh, Stuart uh, Lloyd in nineteen eighty two. Um, the main difference between two are just how to form the initial cluster centroids. Uh, as we uh, just briefly went through already, that um, for k-means, initially k-clusters uh, are formed with um, one record each. And the centroids of each cluster is, uh, is directly uh, uh, a vector of the attribute values of that so uh, single record. In a cluster. 
So K means initially to assign this uh, random uh, this uh, centroids, it will be random assignment. With K means, then um, the idea is this: that the random initial centroid could affect how long and how well the adjustment can be done. So K means uh, could improve the time. Uh, uh, the initial assignments can init uh, improve time and uh, uh, by using a, a measure to uh, determine uh, the likelihood of selecting a record to form a uh, cluster centroid. So uh, the only the first cluster centroid, just only one cluster centroid, will um, have a random record. So that one um, is like k-means. But if you have k equals to 3 or k equals to 10, this, the next, um, the, the rest of the clusters will go through this process. Uh, essentially, if a record is very already very close to this centroid, that's not a good idea to uh, choose that record uh, to be another cluster centroid, because they're already close. Likely, those two records should belong to the same uh, centroid. So using that, if it is very close, the likelihood of selecting that record to become uh, the next uh, cluster centroid is uh, very low. And we will want to select some other records that are already uh, that are far from the existing cluster centroid. The first one or the second one or the third one depends on whether you uh, when uh, whether you're assigning the record to the second cluster or third cluster and so on. So in a way this is kind of like um, as far as possible and that's the the main uh, basis for father's first algorithm meaning being far away from existing centroids. Um, visually, this is an example I, uh, that I uh, could be used that to explain how useful if initially, if assume these are actual initial centroids of three clusters being assigned, and if they're assigned uh, very carefully and they're actually very nice, then as, um, then uh, identifying the assignment of the rest of the records to their clusters are become very straightforward. Reassignments are very are minim minimal, and uh, and so it can stop pretty quickly. And so that's the difference between k means versus k means plus plus that you may try in um, in simple k means. Uh, so when you implement k-means, uh, one of the biggest uh, challenges to data scientists or to businesses, especially uh, when you are deciding on market segmentation, is how to uh, determine um, k. So if it's uh, market um, segmentation or uh, record seg uh, segmentation, you really should think about uh, domain knowledge and managerial implications. Um, because um, that managing different segments also require a management effort or there may be some management constraints, policy constraints. So it's not always just only based on uh, distances or similarities. If you're using your, um, but also uh, determine K uh, based on experimentations uh, or empirically, then you can uh, very similar to k-means, uh, sorry, k-n-n, um, you can uh, change the values of k and uh, compare metrics. And we'll talk about some of the metrics, um, which are not always uh, widely available in k-means uh, implementation. Um, and But um, we will only um, have uh, some, uh, one of them most commonly cross all uh, K uh, means implementation in our tutorial, but at least uh, you should think about looking for this uh, metrics and use metric to see whether metrics improves with K. But as you improve K more uh, time, it may take uh, longer, so less efficient. 
So you want to find the smallest possible k that can give you a good um, metrics improvement. And uh, before the marginal return becomes uh, too low, then uh, you can just choose the k that um, uh, is uh, giving you uh, enough of uh, benefit or enough of uh, a good enough of uh, metrics. So um, one of the things related to unsupervised learning task is always the challenge in understanding uh, the results or the performance. Um, with supervised learning, you have a target. You have um, uh, given true values in um, training and testing data. So you can apply evaluation metrics for classification tasks, such as F measures, um, accuracy, uh, or um, for regression tasks, you can evaluate the performance based on R square or uh, based on um, uh, error measures such as MAE, RM, SE. And so the uh, overall, the uh, biggest challenge of clustering is the difficulty in evaluating uh, cluster, uh, clustering results. Um, as I mentioned, that the metrics sometimes you want to consider, there are some objective measures mainly based on distances, right? um, how similar uh, or similarity, how similar uh, records in a clusters are, and uh, see how they um, silhouette, sorry, uh, metrics uh, is a common one measuring that. Uh, intro cluster. Uh, square distances to centroid are uh, also one that sort of indicate that how far the elements in a cluster are to the centroid. And intercluster uh, distances will indicate how far the centroids are between um, uh, the two clusters or how far the elements are uh, in two clusters uh, to each other. Okay, so. Uh, the other um, evaluation oftentimes apply, uh, require uh, you to use domain knowledge and also think about uh, what, are, uh, what is the purpose of clustering, whether you're doing market segmentation or you're just doing discovery. So um, for market segmentation, um, which is not one that we will uh, sort of practice and finish practicing in our assignment. In the past, I tend to practice uh, clustering for this uh, task. Uh, and you can think about whether you can use the data set um, in, from tutorial and from assignment for this purpose on your own, or data sets that you are considering for um, data mining project proposal um, uh, your team is working on. So um, the, uh, typically, the cluster outcome are, uh, it shows the mean values of attributes of uh, records in a cluster. And that's called centroids. And uh, using simple k-means, you can also show standard deviations of um, clusters, uh, of elements in the cluster to that uh, mean. And this can give you a sense of the distribution of values. Uh, attribute values of elements in this one, and such as uh, word frequency or demographic or age distribution or gender distribution uh, and number of friends um, in of um, teens, uh, teenagers in a cluster. And um, so uh, choosing K is part of the um, uh, clustering task that you should evaluate um, to see whether different clusters can give you something more meaningful than k equal, if k equals to three is not, doesn't give you very meaningful results, you may want to change it to two, change it to four, or keep on changing it to higher numbers. And, uh, and, uh, and seeing whether the cluster give you some meaningful results you may want to, uh, typically I will ask students to look at the centroids and standard deviations to see whether this uh, uh, mean value, such as the mean age, uh, average age of um, 
uh, of the records in a cluster and the standard deviation or the average number of uh, frames uh, and average number of the use of certain word uh, in a pro uh, user profile in social network, whether that can give you some sort of a, uh, characteristics of that cluster, and then you can start to think about uh, meaningful names. And this is the type of um, uh, practice and process that marketers out there in uh, marketing or consulting companies for um, uh, that use data to help uh, give uh, marketing insights have done. And um, for example, for cruise. Um, uh, customers, customers who go on cruises and uh, different attributes such as their uh, spendings on the cruise, whether they're mostly uh, spend a lot on bar, uh, at bars and, uh, and based on their age and uh, based on the time of their reservation, you may find that there's a cluster of we call um, go to the bar, uh, going for the bar uh, type of customers where they uh, spend a lot at the bar and they may be um, maybe young, but doesn't always the case. Or they may be another cluster called young professionals. You know, they are definitely young and uh, they seem to be very time pressed and last minute reservation and so on and so forth. And you may see a, a customer, a, a cluster that are golden age uh, where they are um, um, uh, older, uh, maybe grandparents and tend to bring generations uh, and book for a, a large number of uh, uh, cru cruise, uh, cruise customers together. And uh, the spendings may be more family-oriented activities on the board and so on. So those are uh, useful exercise and actually can come up with some uh, uh, you know, meaningful and useful market se segmentation based on clustering results. And so to come up with those names, you will throw data into k-means, adjust k, adjust different method, and then look at the clustering outcome based on this. And not just based on uh, you know, uh, silhouette uh, measures or intro cluster square uh, error measures, and um, but mostly based on uh, this means and uh, the attribute value distribution. Uh, another thing I have done in the past when I use clustering for market segmentation exercise will be to assume some cost and benefit factors of a target action, knowing that we have some, uh, some uh, clusters and some meaning, and we start to propose some target uh, promotions, for example, for different clusters and their different deals and maybe different combinations of uh, promotions for different clusters and their costs involved and assume benefit involved and do some cost benefit uh, evaluation um, uh, in a different way um, from uh, cost, uh, cost benefit for classification but um, it is still very uh, set-based, uh, based on the set of uh, customers belonging to um, a cluster and the potential cost and benefit uh, when you do promotion and can think about that. Um, in this, uh, this semester, we are looking at clustering mostly more for, I found the benefit could be more for uh, data exploration. And so, even though we like to, in order to apply data mining well, it is important to think about what problem you're trying to solve and you have a target, you have a goal and you select the task. But when uh, the problems, the business problems are not very well defined, your target is not very clear. Uh, and whether you want to predict sales or um, you want to uh, uh, classify uh, customer gender, um, if the gender information is missing or hidden, or uh, or uh, it is be you no know, customers belonging to your competitors, and you have some data from the uh, social network or Facebook of uh, 
uh, uh, group, uh, you know, the group of customers belonging to your competitor. So, um, so then this is a time where exploring data is an important process to help discuss, uh, discover that whether there is some, maybe some uh, target and some goal that you can achieve using the data. And frankly, it is very common to be that way. Just, I have this data set, what can I do? What can I, how can I create value from it? So clustering, then you sometimes we say, well, let's look at, put the customer records uh, uh, or put uh, some product records or put company uh, profiles from uh, Hoover, for example, uh, or from uh, 5K, 10K statements, if there's some company information. Let's throw them into clustering and see whether we can see different groups of companies or different groups of social network profiles, different groups of tweets or different groups of patients and so on. And then we can gradually discover from it. And uh, sure enough, you definitely, if you look uh, hard enough, um, it will help. And clustering help you, help pull your eyes to a group of them at a time, because based on distance, measures or similarity measures, they're supposed to be more similar. And of course you can adjust K in that process. So, um, sorry about this. And then, so um, definitely you need to, in that process you need to be patient and you need to be creative because you're not giving a task and all, all the time and you actually are uh, going to potentially propose some business question based on your um, exploration and discovery. So for examples later on uh, in the tutorial, um, using teen ager social network uh, profile keyword data, and you may be mainly discovering and then start to think about whether there could be some applications or using this uh, data set. The other thing, even for exploratory purpose, that uh, you can build and compare some supervised models such as classification or regression by assuming, you know, and because there's some data, some attributes there, you can assume, oh, maybe I can use age as a target for uh, regression and see how other attributes relate to or affect uh, the, relate, uh, affect the estimation of uh, that, uh, a teenager's age or a number of friends can some uh, other attributes, for example, how many times certain keywords were mentioned or used in profiles can affect the estimations for number of uh, estimations of number of friends. And the other one classification, actually um, internet uh, data scientists have used a lot more and more is to estimate the gender or to classify unknown uh, 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 customers with unknown genders into uh, their uh, potential estimated genders. Uh, since if the values are available, even though you haven't been given those supervised learning tasks, but you can use the model build to understand which attributes uh, co uh, can jointly uh, in a multivariate uh, model uh, uh, jointly affect the target. Using correlation uh, coefficient analysis or a visualization, you can see mostly two pair, uh, uh, no, two variables relationship. But by building models, you can see multivariate uh, relationship. And so one example of the exercise in your tutorial, and I would also like to ask you to practice is um, build these models for the whole data set. Then once you have clustered subsets or clusters, then you build models for uh, clusters and then compare the differences so you can better understand different groups of uh, data objects. And I think then uh, it's, uh, clustering is actually a, a fun uh, process and it can uh, serve, uh, if you're open-minded and being creative about it, you can actually learn and, uh, a lot from it. And it's also, uh, oftentimes students 
um, reflected that it is an enjoyable intuitive process. Uh, so pros and cons, and it's, it's a fast process, as you can see, um, sometimes goes through 20, 30 iterations, not hundreds, and uh, sometimes uh, less than 10 iterations. But just like all clustering outcome is uh, um, hard to evaluate uh, the results and the fixed number of clusters you have to tweak and you have to do some more empirical work. Uh, there are some algorithms out there to help select clusters. And I personally don't find them to be very meaningful because the number of clusters tend to be driven by, um, my choices tend to be driven by what are the managerial considerations in selecting clusters for segmenting customers, for example. Or uh, it will be driven by the distributions of um, customers in different clusters. When I see them to be meaningful, um, that you no, know, then the K is the the uh, a good choice. Uh, so, last uh, couple slides. Uh, as usual, I uh, always want to talk about uh, and, and compare uh, our packages for a task. And this is the last time I am suggesting another package, uh, and um, for good reason. So first of all, K means in from machine learning in R, that's the package that's from, sorry, that's the function name from the class package, which actually is part of basic K. So you don't have to load this or uh, hold, uh, or in, uh, you don't have to install or uh, end load this class package uh, before you can use k-means function. And there are some, uh, it is pretty easy to use, but there are some limitations. Um, it cannot handle categorical variables. So uh, you need to transform them. And it uh, does not automatically apply normalization, standardization, and you have to do them. And even missing value, uh, I didn't mention here, in comparison that you also uh, should consider how to call your missing value so that k-means can be applied to the missing values a bit more meaningfully. So uh, this was used on the data set. Actually, I think it is a very good idea to, uh, very representative of a new uh, type of uh, tasks for data scientists, which is using texture, uh, ex uh, texture uh, input, uh, and, uh, uh, but somehow already um, structure, uh, uh, have a structure form such as only words. Uh, for uh, to represent the features, and um, so those uh, those words, uh, the values of the words are, represent the num uh, frequency or number of times the words were uh, in the uh, profile of certain um, uh, persons, or maybe sometimes this can also come from some postings or uh, from the person. And uh, so those are all numerical, and k-means uh, can be applied there without too much of um, uh, work. So um, in the tutorial, we will take a look at them. Um, for assignment, I am using the same, we using the same data set, and uh, also some derivations of that data set. Um, um, but uh, I would um, ask you to use simple k-means because it simplified the use of um, the in the use of categorical variable, which are only a couple of them in that data set, and the standardization and a missing value can be imputed automatically. Um, but if you don't want this, then uh, you know in the tutorial in assignment, I would just suggest uh, require you to remove missing values um, and uh, unless you want to include them for comparison. And in addition, that it has the k uh, k means plus plus uh, 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 options that you can in, uh, try. Uh, it ha you can uh, also try Manhattan distance function. Uh, we have sample code to uh, show you how to choose it uh, in the tutorial, and uh, you can also always uh, include you can include signal deviation of a class. For me, I like that. Um, just knowing the means and not knowing the, uh, the how spread out or scattered or concentrated 
of the values of an attribute in a cluster um, um, doesn't tell me entirely about a cluster. So, um, so this is the data set that um, is uh, used in the classroom tutorial and assignment seven. I will also uh, transform uh, this uh, to be used for both clustering and for uh, association rule mining. Uh, it's a nicely collected data set, so I would suggest that you read about this um, and uh, prepare for the tutorial and for your assignment. Okay, thank you.